Father, to praise your name. We are coming here to be with you. We come here, Father, to hear your voice. We come here, Father, because we need you. Father, today, your holy day. Thank you so much, Father, for the blessing of the Holy Spirit. Help us to make a decision today to walk with you, to stay connected to you. Thank you, Father. We ask your blessing upon each one of us, those who could not come yet. Your Holy Spirit be with them. Thank you so much, Jesus, as we continue in this service, in praise your name. Be with us. We need your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing number Four thirty two. Marching to Zion.
Aleluia. Os vizinhos. Good morning, church. Thanks for coming. <coughs> Sorry. Thanks for coming. And we have we have a lot of visitors. We have the grandson here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what is his name is there? Kai. Kai. Okay, Mr. Kai. And we have two of friends are here. Your name, sir? Can you introduce us? Make hair? Exactly. Okay. Thanks for coming. And we have Joseph and Joseph's mother. Oh, you used to come here. Okay. That's good. Thanks for coming again. Thanks for remembering us. Oh, you moved. Sorry. Okay. That's good. God, that's good. At least you're coming and going to put your present here. Thank you. And also we thank you for our brother. Last week you had your, and your father asked me why I did not come for the party. And, uh, and I was thinking, look at my gray hair. With the, 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 no, I was thinking young people have young ideas, young way. I was thinking, I said, let the young people be young. young. <laughs> you know, that's why I, I, I told Bob too, I said, young people be young. So I don't want to go and disturb them. Anyway, congratulations for your graduation. And, uh, God bless you. I hope you have a long way to go. Maybe you're going to more, more studies, going for further studies? Maybe going for a master's? No? Yeah, I prefer, you better go for a master's. Don't stop at your bachelor degree, that's nothing. Now with a bachelor degree, you can't go any further. It's like a like high school certificate in America. So you better go further. So you need to go further. Anyway, we have good visitors. We have Nana. Na, what is his name? Nana. Nana. Thanks for being here, sir. And we, you're always welcome here. And we, one day I want to put you here to speak to us. And please try to prepare. <laughs> <laughs> and also we have uh, our brother here. He just graduated and uh, he, spoke to, uh, he spoke to us twice, correct? Preach here and twice, correct? Twice? Once or twice? Only once? Okay, prepare for one more. When my term come, my term come I'll give it to you. One and a half hours preaching, okay? <laughs> <laughs> huh? It's not lower in October. Today's Sabbath day, correct? Sabbath day? Supposed to be. Happy, correct? I only see little, little teeth up there. <laughs> I see Barbara's teeth up there. I see Mary's teeth. I see Karen's teeth. I see this. So we have, we need, we are not supposed to be happy. Today is a happy day. Supposed to be happy. Because God is here, correct? That's what it says. When he's happy, when you're sitting down beside God, and God will think, what is this, people, huh? They are not appreciating my presence. Think about it. His presence are here. Amen. So be happy. And pray hard, like, like Pastor brought up the, that his, his proposal, Pastor put a lot of things inside the paper, and we're going to pray for 10 days prayer, you know? And uh, anyway, so pray. There's a lot of power in prayer. That's, how, that's what we heard last time, last week. If you, you need the power, pray. If you don't need the power, don't pray. I hope everybody needs power. Everybody wants to see your, pro, your progress and your process is good in a good seed. And God look at your seed. Correct? God look at your seed and say, yes, she is bringing more seed. She is bringing more seed. And this is why we are praying for the seed of the church. We need more seed in the church. 
So that means we need to pray harder and powerfully. Okay, so now is a time for the tithes and offering. Do I invite our deacon come forward for tithes and offering? And the tithes are going to the local church budget. Please stand. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not prepared to speak today. I was just absent. Let's pray. <clears throat> o most loving, kind Father in heaven, we thank you again for this Sabbath day, that you set it, you made it holy, and you set it aside for us to come and worship you, and you, you alone, nobody else. So, Father, we thank you for bringing all your children into this sanctuary so they can worship with you as well as worship with us. So, Father, bless and each and every one of us, Father, Give them the understanding, give them the truth, give them the light, give them the wisdom, and give them the, what they need to know about their second coming. Father God, we also want to know the mercies that you had for us, the long suffering is going through for our sins and shortcomings. You're going through so much. But we are, but you are there to forgive each and every one of us. We come reverently, Come for repentance. So, Father, now bless the tithes and offering. Those who give, bless them. Those who didn't give, bless them double. Send the Holy Spirit each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now it's our prayer time. And as we do here, I want to ask for any praises or prayer requests that anybody has. Continue praying for this project that we have. Uh, ten days, <clears throat> ten days of prayer, starting this week, uh, starting Monday, seven o'clock, right? Seven o'clock, seven to thirty. We're going to be praying in the evening, in the evening. and uh, on the twenty fifth, uh, May twenty five, we are going to be here bringing uh, uh, those people that the Lord uh, asked us to invite them. So on the 25th, May 25th, so we're going to have everybody here uh, by, by God's grace. We should be here uh, celebrate uh, God's love. I 
Anyone else have anything? I'd like to offer a uh, praise for a beautiful day today. God has given us the rain during the week. He's taken it and given us some sunshine this morning. But we have a beautiful day. want to keep all the grace in our prayers as Amen. we continue her healing. Yeah. I was going to say the same thing. We keep her. I saw her. We saw her last week. The other week, and she's coming along well. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. God's blessing upon her. Keep her in prayer. And on that same note, we can keep everybody who's all the members who aren't here right now. We can keep them in our prayers. And then I guess also like I can say for my grandmother who's like had having like like physical prom like she's having like some like physical problems like right now so like I I'll put her in the prayer. And now those who are able to kneel should kneel and anyone else should get into a reverent position. Dear Lord, thank you for this day that you have given us. And thank you for all the people you have brought here and all the guests that came today, as well as all the members. And thank you for the beautiful sunshine you gave us this morning after a week filled with rain. And um, thank you for the rain that we had this week that can help the plants grow, especially as it's starting to warm up again, as it's getting closer to summer, where plants need more rain because of the heat. And you heard all of the prayer requests that were said. As there's prayers for my grandmother who's has some physical problems and you know what they are and please heal her quickly and give her ease at this time and also as my family and I go to El Salvador later this week that you give us traveling that you protect us during our travels and our time there. And I pray that you'll keep the church, like that you will protect us 
as a as your people no matter what life brings us <coughs> there will be times when yeah there will be a time when we are not allowed to gather anymore and i pray that you will protect us even through that time of trials And I thank you for the four years that I had studying in at Moravian University and the, the knowledge you <clears throat> allowed me to gain that I can take into a career. And I pray that you will help all of us to continue to be lights to the world, sharing your message with those around us and that you will touch the hearts of those we, sh we share the message with. Because it's not our like choice on if somebody else chooses to believe and follow your word. They have to make their own decision. But you can guide them to the right decision through the Holy Spirit. And I pray that as we go through the week, that you will give us all health and strength to go through every day and be able to do everything we need to do each day. Thank you for listening to this prayer. In the name of Jesus, amen.
He is our only hope. Don't try to find anybody else. Don't try to find any place else. Jesus is the only hope. And he start with, when you go in your knees before him. That's how we start your relationship with God. You go in your knees before him. Give your heart to him. We don't have much time here. We don't have much, much time here to stay in this earth. We see the confusion, the wars. You see the weather, how crazy. Go to your Bible and you see the signs that Jesus is telling you and me. Do you think we have enough time? We, still, we have a lot of time here in this earth, do you think? If you study your Bible, you see for yourself. We are at the end, brothers and sisters. Have you studied Daniel too? We are at the end. We have a message today from the Lord. As we receive light today, as we receive light from Jesus, What are we going to do? The theme for the, the sermon today, for the message, the last message of mercy. This is the last message of mercy. Let's go to Revelation 14. Let's go to Revelation 14. And I hope and I pray that you brought your Bible. Not your phone, not your iPad, but your Bible. Uh, we're going to read Revelation 14, 7. We are going to read Daniel 8. We are going to read Daniel 7, 13. You know, 1844, Jesus moved from the holy place to the most holy place. And he's doing his last work there, interceding for you and me. He wants to bring me and you back to perfection. Let's read Revelation 14, verses number 7. Say with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven, earth, and sea, and mountains of waters. Let's go to Daniel 7.13. Daniel 7.13. And if you find it, say amen. Praise the Lord. Who find? 17. Let's read uh, Daniel 8, 14. Daniel 8, 14. We're going to have to spend more time in the Bible. Spend more time reading God's words. Two thousand and three hundred days. What's going to happen? Sanctuary shall be cleansed. The central theme of the Bible, the theme about each every other in the whole book clusters, is the redemption plan. Hallelujah. The restoration in the human soul of the image of God from the first intimation of hope in the sentence pronounced in Eden to that last glorious promise of the revelation. They shall see his face, 
and his name shall be in their foreheads. Revelation 22, 4. Heavenly Father, as we come before you, Father, to learn more about you, help us to understand, your Father, every word that proceeds out of your mouth. Help us to understand, your Father, the truth for today. We want to be ready, Father. Cleanse our hearts. Fill us now, Father, with your Holy Spirit, we pray in the name of your Son, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Examining more closely the subject of the sanctuary, we are need to understand the subject of the sanctuary, brothers and sisters. If we don't understand the sanctuary message, we don't understand the plan of redemption. And then we're going to be lost. If you see a lot of confusion inside the church, because the church is not understand the plan of salvation, they are not looking into the sanctuary and learning from Jesus. The way of God is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? Psalms 77, 13. And I will put enmity between the, thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Genesis 3, 15. This is the plan of the redemption. The way of God is in the sanctuary. The intersection of Christ in man's behalf is the sanctuary above, is, a, is as essential to the plan of salvation as was his death upon the cross. By his death, he began the work which after his resurrection, he ascended to complete in heaven. We must, by, fa by faith, enter within the veil, whether the forerunner is for us enter Hebrews 6:20 So you see how important for us to go in to go inside the most holy place enter it within the veil we must by faith The judgment is now passing in the sanctuary above for many years, this work has been in progress. Soon, not know how soon, it will pass to the cases of the living. In the awful presence of God, our lives are to come up, is to come up in review. At this time, above all others, it behooves every soul to heed the Savior's admonition. Watch and pray. For ye know not when the time is. Mark 13, 33. As we learn, 1844, Jesus entered into the most holy place. He moved from the holy place to the most holy place. The sanctuary in heaven is the very center of Christ's work in behalf of men. It concerns every soul living upon the earth. It opens to view the plan of redemption. It opens to view the plan of redemption, bringing us down to the very close of time and revealing the triumphal issue of the contest between righteousness and sin, the good and evil. That's why we need to understand what's happening in the sanctuary. The subject of the sanctuary and the investigative judgment should be clearly understood by the people of God. Should be clearly understood by the people of God. That's why we need to read, we need to understand, pray to God, and study the subject of the sanctuary. All need a knowledge of for themselves, all need a knowledge for themselves of the position and work of the great high priest, the position of Jesus right now. 
Otherwise, it will be impossible for them to exercise the faith, which is essential at this time, as we just seen, the very last days, at this time, or to occupy the position which God designs them to fulfill. Every individual has a soul to save or to lose. Amos, let's go to Amos. Let's go to Amos and read verses, chapter 6 and verse 1. Every individual has a soul to save or to lose. I'm going to be saved or I'm going to be lose. Amos 6 and verses 1. King James Version, King James Version. Woe to them, woe to them. They are at easy in Zion. I'm going to stop right there. Woe to them, they are at easy in Zion. Every individual has a soul to save or to lose. We got to get ready. And of the children of Issachar, which, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel, what to do, the heads of them were 200, and all the brethren were at their commandment. First Chronicles 12, 32. So the children of Issachar, one of the, the tribals of God's people, and uh, what they need to do, they need to understand. They understand the times. They understand the times. And what else? They, they know what to do. So that's what we need to understand the time we were living. And we need to, to know what to do. Because we have a mission, brothers and sisters. We need to understand the times that we are living. Okay? And we need to know what to do. We can't be at easy. Woe to them. They are, to, they are easy. They are at easy in Zion. That's King James Version. Woe to them. We need to understand the time and we need to know what to do. And when the position of Christ changed from the holy to the most holy place in the sanctuary, it is by faith to enter with him, understanding, understanding his work, and then to present the words, the last message of mercy. This is the message that God is giving to us today. Present to the world the last message of mercy that is to be given to the world. And what is it? It is a message to prepare a people for the second coming of the Son of Man. We cannot be at ease now, brothers and sisters. It is a message to prepare a people for the second coming of the Son of Man. Above, above the place where Jesus stood before the ark was exceedingly bright glory that I could not look upon. It appeared like the throne of God. Just like that. Like, just like that picture there. We can have an idea. Above the place where Jesus stood on the most holy place before the ark was exceedingly bright glory that I could not look upon. It appeared like the throne of God. That's the presence of God Father. Now we have opened our sex access to God's most holy place. At any time, brothers and sisters, at any time, you go to Jesus, at any, at any time, by faith, we can go to the most holy place. As foretold, in the scriptures, the ministration of Christ in the most holy place began, began at the termination of the prophetic days in 1844. 
to this time apply the words of the revelator, John, the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. The ark of his testament. What we find inside the ark of his testament? The Ten Commandments. Vital connection with Jesus is everything today. I don't know how you spend your time. But vital connection with Jesus is everything. Is everything. And this is life eternal. That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. John 17, 3. This is eternal life, brothers and sisters. We need to know God. We need to, seek, we need to seek Him, spend time with Him. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried out, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of God in their foreheads. If we get the seal, if we get the seal of God, we are saved. If we don't get the seal of God, we are lost. We are lost, brothers and sisters. If we get the seal of God, we are saved. If you don't get the seal of God, we are lost. We just read the four angels holding the wings. Let's go to Revelation 7, 1. Let's go to Revelation 7, 1, chapter 7, verses 1. The four angels are holding the wings. The wings. We think this everything is going to be the same as the usual. My, my, my Bible says destruction are coming. Revelation 7, 1. And we have a message to give. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. What are they, what are they doing? What, 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 what are they doing? The four angels on the corners of the earth. What are they doing? They are holding, they're holding the four wings. Are you reading your Bible? Are you reading your Bible? Holding the four wings of, from where? Of the earth. But it's not going to be forever, brothers and sisters. It's not going to be forever. Who gets that seal? Who gets the seal that we just read? The seal of the living God. Let's go again. Uh, Revelation 7, 3. Revelation 7, 3 says, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till, until we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Until we have what? Seal. The servants, the servants, brothers and sisters, they are going to get the seal until we have sealed the servants, the servants of our God in their foreheads. The servants, they are going to be sealed. The servants, the Bible says the servants. The devil does not want you and I to get that seal.
in distinct, in distinct notes of solemn warning is to be given the closing message that will prepare a people to receive the seal of the living God. What is the message is to, be, to, to do? What is this message is to do? To prepare a people to receive the seal of the living God. Time is short. Know we not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? Romans 6.16. That's, that's, a, that's a, a King James Version. What about this one here? Don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? Oh. You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death. Or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Romans 6.16 If we obey Satan, what's going to happen? We are saved, we are servant of Satan. If, if we obey the word, we are what? Servant of the word. If we obey God, we are servant of God. Unless we are obedient to God, we become servants of God. And my Bible tells me, only the servants of God, they will receive the seal of God. Only the servants. In, in, the, in the very time we, in which we live, last days, the Lord has called his people and has given them a message to bear. God has given me a message. God has given you a message. He has called them to expose the weakness of the man of sin, papacy, who has made the Sunday law a distinctive power, who has thought to change times and laws, Daniel 7, 25, and to oppress the people of God who stand firmly to honor him by keeping the only true Sabbath, the Sabbath of creation, as holy unto the Lord. We're gonna we're gonna need love in our hearts, brothers and sisters. We're gonna need Jesus to go through this this time of trouble. To live to give this message to the world. To give this message to the world, you're gonna have to have that relationship with Jesus like never before. We have to have the Holy Spirit in you, abiding in you all the time, every day, every second, to give that message. And only love for Jesus, only love to Jesus is going to make you to do this. Nothing else. You can have a billion dollars in your account. You're not going to be able to do God's work if you don't have the love of Jesus in your heart. No matter what you do, if you don't have the love of Jesus in your heart, forget about it. If you love me, said Jesus, you will obey my commandments. If you love me, but if you, don't, if you don't love me, don't worry about it. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another help, who will stay with you forever. Hallelujah. He is the Spirit of God who reveals the truth about God. The world cannot receive him. No, no, no. Because he cannot see him or know him. John 14, 15, 18. And we need to become God's friends. We need to become God's friends. John 15. If the truth of church becomes lukewarm, it does not stand in favor of, with God any more than, than do the church that are represented as having fallen, 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 and become the habitation of devils and the hold of every full spirit in the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Mercy. Revelation 3.16. Let's go there. Revelation 3.16. Revelation 3.16. You have to have your Bible, brothers and sisters. You have to read your Bible. Read your Bible. 
You got to read your Bible. What Jesus is talking to you. Revelation 3.16. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spill thee out of my mouth. If the church stays lukewarm, we don't stand in favor with God. So we need to, we need to do something. We need to go in our knees. We need to humble ourselves before God. You are my friends, said Jesus. You are my friends, said Jesus. If you do whatever I command you, and then you my, you my friend, if you do what I, what I tell you to do, you my friend. But if you don't do what I said to you to do, you complete, you complete the sentence. Here is our work, to lift up the standard of truth before the people. We must move on now, brothers and sisters. We must move on now. We must move on now. What I mean? What I mean with that? Move on now. What I mean with that? We gotta move on now. We have work to do. Close of probation is before us. And we must move now. We have to go in the most holy place, brothers and sisters. And stop that foolishness that is around us. We got to go inside the most holy place. You need to study for yourself. What's happening there? What is Jesus is doing there? We must move now. We got to go inside the most, whole, the most holy place where Jesus is right now. We don't have no more time to play around, to play church. We got to move now. And then we can go and let, uh, give the message to the people. The perils of the last days are upon us. Don't you see? And in our work, we are to warn the people of the danger they are in. If they don't know the truth, they are going to perish. We have no time to lose. God calls upon us to watch for souls as they, that, as they that must give an account. This is powerful. This is powerful. Now, if you're, holding, if you're holding the truth that God is giving you for yourself and let the people die, so their blood is going to be in your hand. So you got to share the good news. Share the good news. There, is, there, there works for everybody. Share the good news. They, as they, they, they must give in account. Okay? We have no time to lose anymore. We got to go inside the most holy place and share the good news. To us has been entrusted the work of proclaiming the last message. The last message of mercy to be given to our world. The message that is to prepare a people to stand in the day of God. Is a message to prepare a people to stand in the day of God. They are going to stay faithful to God. No matter what. Do we realize our accountability? Do we? Do we? Do we realize our accountability, our responsibility? Are we acting our part in the proclamation of this message? Are we? If we walk humbly with the Lord, we shall see of his salvation. We're going to have to be in our knees, brothers and sisters. There we can get strength. There you can get power. 
to move in harmony with Jesus. Moving, walking with Jesus. The Lord does not want one soul to be lost. Christ shed his blood to cleanse every human being from sin. It is God's great day of preparation. Today, time for us to prepare. Decisions are to be made. The only way in which they can fulfill God's expectation is by being representatives of the truth for this time. That's the only way. That's the only way, brothers and sisters. If you want to be, if you want to be uh, sealed by God, if you want to be on 144,000, can fulfill, the only way in which they can fulfill God's expectation is by being representatives. Representatives. Representatives of Jesus. You don't have time to lose. The only way in which they can fulfill God's expectation, God exp expects you and me, you know what I mean? He could send angels to finish this work. He could send all his angels, you know, go and do it, man. forget her. Forget her, forget her. Just go and do it. But he's counting, he's counting on me and you. He expects me and you to be a soldier for him. He expects that. Jesus said, I must walk in the works of him that sent me, while it is day, the night come when no man can walk. John 9, 4. The night is coming, brothers and sisters. If we walk humbly with the Lord, we shall see his salvation. The last message of mercy is now going forth. It is a token of this long suffering and compassion of God. Come, come. It is the invitation now given. Come is the invitation now given. Come. For all things are now ready. This is mercy's last call. Next will, next will come the vengeance of offending God. Mercy. Mercy. That's why the Bible says the vengeance is mine. We need to be preaching this message. The mercies, the mercy of God so they can prepare to see God face to face, so they can receive the seal of God. Fear God, stay away from Satan's lies, and keep the Sabbath day holy. We have no time for dwelling on matters that are, no, uh, uh, they are of no importance. We don't have time for this. Our time should be given to proclaim the last message of mercy to a guilt word. That's what we need to do, Brother Montel. That, 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 keep, keep going. Do, doing do, not to do, not to do, not, not, go, no, no, door to door, door to door, door to door. We have not time to lose. We have these 10 days of prayer now. We're going to be praying about those people that God is going to show us. We're going to fill this, all this bench is going to be filled with people that want to serve God. They want to be, they want to be ready to see Jesus face to face. There is no work in our world so great, so sacred, and so glorious. No work that God honors so much as this gospel work. There is no other work. I know everybody here has has this uh, has those jobs to do, you know? But uh, Jesus is telling me and you, there is no work in our world so great. I know everybody here. I hope has a job, you know, has things to do, you know, get paid. But Jesus is telling me and you, there is no work in our world so great, so great. And so glorious, no work that God honors 
so much as this gospel war. Let's keep this in our hearts. The world is not being worn as it should be. Mercy. Thousands are perishing in their sins. And the last message of mercy to a fallen world is to be proclaimed. Me and you, we got to take a position and, and give the last message to them. But how little is being done? How little? How little is being done? It's very hard for us to, to put something together. Mercy. How little is being done? If you pray one time a day, you think it's a lot. If you pray one minute a day, that's enough. Wow. A message of life and death. We have a message of life and death. How can we give a message of life and death? Spend one minute or five minutes with Jesus a day. How can we do this? That the world is on the verge of a stupendous Christ. That's what the prophet said. And whatever the prophet said, Jesus gave to her. A stupendous Christ. Jesus told her, write it down. Write it down. Are we going to wait to come the stupendous price so we can go to the people to say, hey, uh, uh, have, have you, have you uh, learned about Jesus' love for you? Are you going to wait for this to the, 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 uh, the uh, Sunday law to pass? On the CNN, you're going to see uh, whoever is the president is signed the Sunday law. So are you going to wait for that time? Satan is working to fill minds with the spirit of ambition and of co commercialism. Those whose minds are thus diverted will lose the opportunity of giving the last message of, of, to the world. Satan is working to fill minds. But our principle, this is, this is Satan's words, but our principal concern is to silence the sect of Sabbath keepers. He wants me and you to keep silence. In distinct notes of solemn warnings to be given the closing message that we prepare a people to receive the seal of God. Suddenly, with power and great glory, Christ will come. Then there will be no time to prepare to meet him. So now is the time for us to prepare. Because time is short. And if you wait too much, it might be too late. It might be too late, brothers and sisters. Now it's time for you and me to prepare. The Lord calls, the Lord calls, me and you. Will men and women hear his voice? He gives the warning. Will they hear it? Will they listen to the last message of mercy to a fallen world? Will they accept Christ's yoke and learn from his meekness, from him, his meekness and lowliness? Time is running out, brother and sister. I saw that remnant were not prepared for what is coming upon the earth. Stupidity like lethargy seemed to hang upon the minds of most of those who profess to believe that we are having the last message. My accompanying angel cried out with awful solemnity, get ready, get ready, and get ready. The angel is talking to me and you today. Get ready. Get ready and get ready. We cannot sleep. We cannot be indifferent. We must labor for the precious souls of men and women around us. We must work with all our might, for the Lord is coming. Lord has room for all the workers who will give the last message of mercy. He has place for everybody. He has work for everybody. And this is a great work, brothers and sisters. It's a great work. 
with study fervent to award that interspress and sins. Mercy. What we need in what we need is heart religion. We need to sit low at the feet of Jesus Christ, where we can learn the precious lessons He is waiting to teach us. There are but two classes in the world: the class that know God and the class that know Him not. Two classes. Two classes. If you are studying every day, spend time with Jesus. You know God. You you, you know Him. And the class that know him not. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. We have work to do. We have work to do. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. We cannot keep the truth for ourselves. Therefore said, said him unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he should he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Don't think it's gonna be funny. It's gonna be it's not gonna be funny. The Lord is send you and he's gonna be among wolves. Less messages or less warnings are very important. If one does not take them seriously, one has to count on unpleasant uh, consequences. On the other hand, if they are followed, one can enjoy wonderful benefits. The Bibles present a less message in Revelation 14, 6 to 12. The three angels' message, three angels' message, that needs to be go now, we need to move in the most holy place and hear from Jesus. Say with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him. The hour of his judgment is come and worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of the waters. Revelation 14, 7. That was the Bible verse we start. Jesus called us all, 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 okay, all, to have a ministry in the church and a message to share with the world. And it is, it is comforting to know that while we are messaging for Jesus, he holds us in his hand. Amen? He holds us. Where? In his hand. For yet a little while, brothers and sisters, for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Hebrews 10, 35 to 37. And we stop right here, brothers and sisters. For yet a little while. It's going to be just a little bit more that we're going to stay on this earth. It's just a little bit more. I don't know if you understand that. I don't know if you understand that we just have a little bit more time here. And God gives, gives, is giving us a message to prepare our people, to prepare ourselves and prepare our people. If you don't understand that, we need to go in, in the most holy place. See what God is doing. See what Jesus is doing. We don't have time to lose. We read that today. Jesus talked to us today. We don't have time to lose. We have to move. We have to move. This is the great work, brothers and sisters, the great work. We have to be every day in the morning when you go to work, what do you do? What do you, what do you think about? What do you think about? I know we have a lot of things to do in our job, but we have to, we, we, the only thing we need to be afraid is to lose focus of Jesus. That, that's the only thing. That's the only thing you have to be afraid to lose focus of Jesus. So you gotta be connected with Jesus and Jesus is gonna send somebody to you that you're gonna hand something to them. You're gonna tell them the time that we are living, judgment time. They need to be prepared. And Jesus is coming, brothers and sisters. Jesus is coming. The Bible says 
He that shall come will come and will not tarry. Will not tarry. So if you think we have 100, 100 years here, you are, you are deceived. You are deceived, brothers and sisters. You are deceived. We have to make sure we stay connected today. So with this, we're going to finish. We are going to sing a song now. One word, Christian soldiers. As we put ourselves in God's hands and we move forward with this message, pray for the May 25. Pray for the May 25 so the Lord can bring the people. It's not going to be me and you that's going to bring the people here. That's the Holy Spirit. He's going to bring the people here. We can convince anybody. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. 612, on old Christian soldiers. Let's stand and sing the song. It's time to get ready. Get ready, get ready, and get ready. Soldiers marching as with the cross of Jesus, for we know before Christ our royal master leads against the Like a mighty army, like a mighty army, move the church of God. Christians, we are training when the sins have thrown. We are not divided.
Amen. We have to move, brothers and sisters. Move. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the message today. We ask you, Father, for the blessing of the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, we are just going to sit down. Help us, Jesus, to stay focused. Focus on you, focus on the message, focus, oh Father, on the promise that you are coming soon. Father, help us to be about your business. We pray, Father, for, we pray, Father, for this church. We pray for your church around the world. Help us, oh Father, to go in the most holy place where Jesus is. Help us to be consecrated, Father. Father, we have a lot of work to do. We put ourselves in your hands. We believe, Father, that you are coming soon. And we don't want to lose more time. We don't want to lose time, Father. We want to help somebody to be saved, to look at you and see how wonderful and loving you are. Thank you, Father, for everything. We, 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 want, we want you, Father. We want you in your hearts. We need you in your hearts, Father. Please come now. Stay with us. Bless each one, each one that come today to listen to you, Father. We are, we, are, we are going to a home that we are going to be with you face to face. Stay with you forever, Father. Help us to prepare. Help us to help our friends, our neighbor, our neighbor, neighbor. And Father, be with our families. Be with our families, Father. Be with people, the people that want to learn more about you, Father. The people that are having Bible study, be with them, Father. The devil is trying everything. He's trying everything that he can. We pray for them, Father, that wants to know more about you. Help them, Father. We put ourselves in your hands. Use us for your own way, glory, Father. Thank you for, for everything, Jesus, that you do for us, that you did for us at the cross, and that you will do for us. We thank you, thank you, and thank you. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray. Amen. Amen.